So this question certainly presents us with a lot of biological facts and jargon, but really all we need to do is take a look at the free body diagram of this lower jawbone. So let's go ahead and do that. So here is that free body diagram, and our objective in the question is to solve for the force that's labeled T and also the force that's labeled R. And we can begin to solve for those forces by applying the following simple equation. We know that because the lower jawbone is in equilibrium, that the sum of the torques acting on the jawbone is going to equal zero. Now, before you can start plugging various torques into that equation, you have to choose a pivot point. And it's going to be advantageous to choose the pivot point to be located right here. Because if you look carefully at the diagram, you will notice that the force labeled T passes directly through that pivot point. Recall that any force that passes through the pivot point will produce zero torque. So we actually, by putting the pivot point through where force T is passing, can eliminate that force from our torque equation. And therefore, we're just going to be calculating the torques produced by F sub C as well as by R. Let us also recall that when calculating torque, we're going to say that the magnitude of the torque is equal to the force times the distance to the pivot. So for example, starting with FC, we would take the FC force and we would multiply it by the distance to that pivot point, which is seven and a half centimeters. Now it's okay to leave it in centimeters because we're setting this equation equal to zero. And as we will see, the centimeters are going to cancel out anyways. We then consider whether this torque is positive or negative. Now consider the fact that the downward force of FC is acting on the far left end of the jawbone. And to figure out whether it's positive or negative, you wanna figure out whether it's producing clockwise versus counterclockwise torque. And one useful trick you could do is take your pencil and just sort of lay it on the table in front of you. And then with one hand, pin the pencil down at the far right corner. That's going to represent where our pivot is. And then with your other hand, push down on the pencil in the same manner that FC is pushing down on the lower section of the jawbone. And if you do that exercise, you should see that your pencil will tend to rotate in a counterclockwise direction. And that means that the torque will be positive. And so we're gonna leave this as positive in our calculation. We can move on to the torque produced by the force labeled R. And we're gonna take that force and then we're gonna multiply it by a distance. Now notice if you extend the line of action of R in this fashion here, and then measure a distance perpendicular to that line of action, we say it's perpendicular because it's forming a 90 degree angle, that distance right there would be the one we would be plugging into the torque equation. And you can see from the diagram that that distance is indeed the three and a half centimeters. Now we wanna decide whether that will be positive or negative torque. Again, you can do the pencil trick. Take the right side of the lower jawbone, pin it down at this position here with one hand, and then take your other hand and press down on your pencil on the far right end. And if you do that, you should see your pencil tend to rotate in a clockwise direction. Because it's clockwise, that would produce a negative torque. So let's make sure we put a minus sign in our computation here. This is all going to be set equal to zero. Now, of course, we can go ahead and plug in 50 newtons for F sub C. Now we'll multiply the 50 and seven and a half and we'll get 375 Newton times centimeters. We will then subtract the 375 Newton centimeters from both sides of the equation so that we can get it to cancel out on the left side. And then finally, let's just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by the negative three and a half centimeters. And this is the stage in the problem at which the centimeters will cancel out here. So if you look carefully at the centimeters, they would cancel out, and then they cancel out here, that negative cancels. You are left with the value of R, which turns out to be approximately 107. And then dimensionally, we are left with just Newtons on the right-hand side. So this is the correct answer for R. To solve for that T force, we're gonna go back to our free body diagram, and we're going to sort of plug in the value of R that we just obtained. And then we're going to use another equilibrium equation. And we know that the sum of the forces that are acting in the y direction would have to equal zero as well. Now there are only three forces acting in the y direction, the three forces that are in the free body diagram. Fc is negative, so you would have negative 50 newtons. We say it's negative because it's pointing down. 
plus the force that we have labeled T. That's positive because it's pointing up. And then the R force is negative because it's pointing down. So we'll subtract 107 newtons. Pretty easy now to solve for T. You can take negative 50 and just subtract the 107 to get negative 157. And then if you add 157 newtons to both sides, you're going to easily be able to calculate that T force. So T is equal to 157 newtons. And that is the correct answer for that force.